Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to continue to discuss the onset, pathogenesis, and prevention of diseases. In the previous video, we have talked about the antipathogenic qi, the function of antipathogenic qi, which is the, the qi that can help us to prevent, to dispel, to repair, restore, and to maintain of physiological activities. So that's the antipathogenic qi. The pathogenic qi, on the definition, it refers to various pathogenic factors of disease. We also know as pathogens, including six exogenous factors, endogenous factors, pestilent qi, trauma, animal bites, parasites, improper diet, Blend, static blood, and stones. As you can see from the definition, that this kind of a qi actually includes all the pathogens that we have mentioned in the etiology in the previous videos. So the pathogenic qi includes all kinds of pathogens. And these pathogens can cause disease. Of human of, of our human body, it can be internal. It also can be external, which is exogenous and endogenous. As you can see there, there are also a word of evil qi. The evil qi is actually the direct translation from Mandarin. In Mandarin, the the pathogens can cause bad stuff. We call it evil, so the bad stuff, or something we don't want, it's undesired stuff, we call it evil. So the evil qi, that's the direct translation. Sometimes you see in some other books, when they mention the evils, what's the evils? It refers to the pathogenic qi, or the pathogens. The effects of the pathogenic qi, it can cause the imbalance of zhang organs and meridians. It can cause the damage of zhang organs and, all, and meridians. It also can cause the change of the body constitution. The first and second, those are quite similar. Actually, the first one, the imbalance of zhang organs and meridians, refers to the functional impairment. So this kind of patient, if you send them to the hospital, you have the blood test to have their blood tested or to have the exam the exam examinations from the medical devices, they will see all negative reports. So from the lab test or from the examinations, there's, there's nothing wrong with the patient. But the, the patient, those patients do suffer from some symptoms. That's one example we have discussed before, that's the, the old lady that I saw previously with the constant coughing for eight months. And she went to she went she actually went through all the medical tests, all the examinations that she can do. From the top of the head to the bottom of the feet, all negative, nothing wrong. But the patient he suffer from constant constant cough. So that's the imbalance of zhang organs or meridians. This can be caused by the pathogenic qi, no matter from exogenous factors or endogenous factors. The second causing the damage of zhang and meridian. Here we actually refer to the physical changes. The sound this kind of patient, when you send them to the lab, 
you can find some positive results from the lab test. You also might find something from the, the examination. So these are the physical damage of the of the body. It can be the balance imbalance of the endogenous factors. It also can be from trauma, animal bites, or from parasites. The last aspect, the last effect that pathogenic qi can cause the change of body constitution, especially for long term disease, such as someone suffer from the coldness after a long time, and then this pa this patient, the body, their body constitution can be changed to in constitution. This situation is very similar. If you put um, outdoor in plants in under the roof or indoor for a long time, it's going to change the the property of the plants. If you can't change the property, the plants won't grow well. And this pathogenic qi causes changes of the body constitution also when be healthy. For instance, someone suffer from long term coldness or dampness. If you cause the deficiency of yang deficiency in the body, so this kind of patient we have yang deficiency, and then after a long time, this patient can the their body con constitution can change to yang deficiency constitution. And then this kind of body constitution is easier, it's easier to be affected by the coldness. So that's from the pathogenic qi, when they affect the human body after a long time, it will change the body constitution. So that's the effects of the pathogenic qi. The pathogenic qi on the onset effect on the onset of disease. So the previous effect is the how they can affect our human body. But when we discuss of the onset of disease specifically, the pathogenic qi is the main cause of the onset of disease. When you hear from here. Some of you might feel confused. Did I, man did I mention that the antipathogenic qi is the main cause of the onset of disease? The antipathogenic qi is the main cause for internal. The pathogenic qi is the main cause of external compared with the antipathogenic qi. And also the we begin to talk about the relationship between the anti antipathogenic qi and pathogenic qi, the struggle between them, how they can affect the onset of disease. So here you need to understand that it's the main cause of the onset of disease. If there is no pathogenic qi, we will be healthy. We won't have all any kind of disease. So that's why we said the main cause. Whenever the, pa the patient becomes sick, whenever the people become sick, there must be anti uh, there must be pathogenic qi. That's why the main cause. The pathogenic qi will affect the nature of disease. This nature of the disease is actually referred to also in yang. Also some kinds of characteristics of diseases. The um, acute onset or slow onset or latent onset. That's the nature of the characteristics of different di different kinds of disease will be affected by and pathogenic gene. 
such as the six exogenous pathogens, which are the wind, coldness, the dampness, the fire, the summer heat, the these and the dryness. These pathogens, when they cause diseases, most of them are acute onset. And also this kind of disease, allergeny, they all have like fever or overuse of cold and running nose, superficial symptoms or symptoms that link to the lungs. So these are the characteristics of specific pathogenic qi of the nature of disease. So what kinds of disease, the onset of this disease, we have certain laws of the from the different pathogenic qi. These characteristics are the characteristics we discuss in the etiology. Thirdly, the pathogenic qi will affect the location of the disease. Why the pathogenic qi will affect the location of disease? As you can see, these are also from the etiology that we have introduced the characteristics of different pathogens, such as if someone affected by the wind, they're more likely to have skin problem, they're more likely to have headaches or the problem on top of our body. Someone suffer from the dampness, they can they are more likely to have problems in the lower part of your body, of their body, such as sticky stool or edema in the legs or heaviness in the lower extremities. They don't want to move. So these are due to different pathogenic qi affects the human location of the of the disease. And also such we gave you some of the the six exogenous pathogens and sometimes you, you will ask why we don't use the endogenous 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 factors. We have introduced the endogenous factors such as improper diet or ex over exercise. Why don't you use these kinds of as factors as an example? We do can use all kinds of pathogens as an example, such as the improper diet will affect the spleen and stomach directly. So that's the location of the disease due to a different pathogenic pathogenic qi due to different pathogens. So if you know these pathogens, if you know this kind of disease, you're more likely to be affected by which pathogen or which pathogen is more likely to attach which organs or what kind of symptoms? That's all from the study in the previous videos. The last aspect of the effects of the pathogenic qi. Sometimes the pathogenic qi plays the main role in the occurrence of disease in some conditions. This refers to some condition doesn't matter about the anti-pathogenic qi. In some condition, the pathogenic qi played the main role in the occurrence. So the first, the previous three effects, they are the struggle between the anti-pathogenic qi and the pathogenic qi. But the, the Last effect, we mentioned that the pathogenic qi plays the main role in occurrence in some conditions. So it's not always, but in some conditions. Can you show me some examples here? The COVID-19. 
you see we have mentioned we had used we have used the COVID nineteen the COVID nineteen for quite a few times because this disease is the pestinonchi and it's a very typical pestinonchi and it happens now now so we have deeper understanding on the this kinds of pestinonchi you see for COVID nineteen if you're affected doesn't matter how strong you are you're going to be affected that's why we have a, a lockdown for March. We use the distance study. We use the online lecturing now. That's because once if you immerse in that environment, you're going to be affected. Whenever there's a kind of pathogenic qi, you're going to be affected. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter how strong you are. It's still going to be the, be affected, although the strong you are, the body constitution, the strong you are, it's, you may have less symptom or mild symptom, but you're also going to be affected. So in this situation, the pathogenic qi plays the main role in the occurrence. The next topic, the struggle between antipathogenic qi and pathogenic qi. So these are the theories in our in acupuncture theories. That's why you become sick. That's the struggle between these two. The struggle between these two can determine the occurrence of disease. We also can determine the path the pattern the pattern nature of disease. So it all depends these two and this two your, the anti-pathogenic qi, the pathogenic qi. In Chinese medicine and acupuncture theories, how we see the relationship between these two is very similar to a war. Even from two countries, the wolf, one army, the other army. So this is your army, this is your enemy. So the struggle, the fight between your army and the enemy can determine the occurrence of diseases, such as in the material, in, in the, in the first or two class, we have said that the Chinese medicine theories includes many different knowledge from other disciplines. So this is the similar to the military science. When two countries they fight together, if your enemy is very weak, people in that country don't even know that there's there's a there's a war because your army going to fight, your army going to win. At the very beginning, within one or two days, without anyone no notice. So that's the, the occurrence of disease. If the pathogenic qi is weak, your antipathogenic qi can help to prevent the disease, to determine where, whether or not you are you are going to be sick. If your antipathogenic anti-pathogenic qi wins, then there will be no disease. If the anti-pathogenic qi and pathogenic qi, they fight violent, and they, have, they can show the disease, they also can show how severe the symptoms, the symptoms are, how severe the symptoms are. So sometimes if you fight very violently, we can see high fever or the patient become very weak, such as they become very tired. If the antipathogenic qi is weak, the pathogenic qi is strong, you're going to be sick. Because your army is very weak, your enemy is very strong, they're going to invade you directly. 
you have no force to defend. So that's the relationship between these two. They can determine the nature of disease. This the nature of disease is such as the deficiency or the excess of disease or how severe also determine, determine the prognosis or the cause of disease. These begin to study in the therapeutics of acupuncture. Also some parts of these theories will be in the diagnostics. The con contributing factors of the onset of disease. Firstly, environment and the onset of disease. Climbing factors. Climatic factors. If the climatic factors, if the climate change gradually, then we will be healthy. And this climate change, we don't consider as the pathogens. That's in the etiology. In the etiology, we say that the six qi and the six is such as a pathogen. The six qi and the six is such as a pathogen. They all refer to the wind, to the coldness, to the dampness, dryness, the summer heat, and fire. But why? They have different terms of six qi and six is such as factors. That's because the normal change of climatic factors will never cause disease. Once they cause a disease, we call them pathogens. And because of different pathogens related to different seasons, so in different seasons, we are more likely to suffer from certain disease, or we are, not, we are more likely to be invaded by different pathogens such as in winter, we are, no, we are more likely to be affected by the wind. In summer, we are more likely to be affected by the heat, by the fire or summer heat. In autumn, we are more likely to be, suffer, to be affected by the dryness in winter, by the coldness. So these are the climatic factors, and also sometimes in summer, if there if there's hailstorm, and in the evening it become very cold, and this is the dramatic climatic changes can affect our health, and also some climatic changes such as floods or earthquake. Oh, so earthquake is the the other situation, such as the floods from the environment or tsunami. So these, these kinds of climatic factors cause problems, and then these problems, such as other floods, if the, the hydrogen is not that good, it is more likely to have pandemic that's from the climatic changes. The second is the geographic factors that depends on where you live. These we also have mentioned before. Someone live in Joburg, someone live in Cape Town, someone live in Durban. We all got different climates because of the Geographic. So in Joburg, we stay in high ground and we have more dryness. In Durban, we have more humid, which is dampness. In Cape Town, we have more wind and coldness. So people from Cape Town may suffer from wind or coldness more. That's because of the different areas. Conditions of life and work. That's the, the third aspect. Such as someone work in the mine, they work under the ground. For mining workers, 
they may suffer from lungs problem more more easier they can suffer from lung problem easier for someone work like the fisherman they more likely to be suffer by the coldness or dampness because they stay in the water or some people they work in the supermarket in the such as in the food area especially for the meat for the butcher area this area they always have the freezer or the fridge there in a cold condition after a long time they also easier to have the onset of the coldness this kind of disease so these are due to the condition of life and work also from the geographic factors you can see from some phenomena in african countries such as malaria malaria can we can find in some countries it's also because of the location in South Africa, we don't have that much. We don't have that many of malaria. We do still have, but that's also depends on where you live. The social environment. Social environment can help can affect the onset, such as the social status, the financial status or the education of the family these all can affect the, the example that's in some patients especially we saw a lot of stroke patients the stroke patient after stroke after lying in the bed for a few weeks or a few months sometimes their, their personality change they become irritated why this personality changed after the disease and these personality changes actually cause the other onset of the disease which is from the intern internal from the emotion that's because from after stroke this kinds of disease the social details status the financial status of the family might have been changed so this will affect the patient, will affect the onset of disease. So these four aspects are from the environment and the onset of the disease. The second is the body constitution. The body constitution can determine the pattern, the pattern nature of the disease. This is very similar to the example that you put there's, there's, there are two glasses of water. One's ice cold water, one's hot water. Now you use a room temperature water to pour in the ice cold water and another room temperature water to pour in the cold, hot water. The room temperature water can ch be changed into ice cold water or the warm water so the ice cold water at the beginning and the hot water at the beginning that's your body const your body constitution the two type of body constitution which also yin and yang the cold is yin constitution the hot is yang constitution and then the pathogen the pathogen, no matter what kind of pathogen, that's the room temperature water. The room temperature water goes to the hot body, to the yang constitution. The pathogen will be changed into warm. If the pathogen goes to the ice cold water, the pathogen will be changed into cold. So this doesn't matter what kinds of pathogen. That's your body constitution constitution will change the pathogens will determine the patterns of nature so for yang pattern for yang more yang patient they more likely to have a yang pattern 
which is SSC. They also can have for in patient, they also they may have in pattern. You also can determine which kind of pathogen, which kind of pathogens are easier to attack certain group of people, such as yang deficiency patient. That's yang deficiency body con constitution. This kind of patient, they are more likely to be attacked by the coldness and dampness. In body constitution, they are more likely to be affected by the yang pathogen, such as the fire. So these are the examples from the body constitution and the onset of disease. The last part is the mental con constitution, the onset of disease. The mental constitution and the onset of disease actually it can be included in the endogenous factors because mental conditions will change the emotion which is also considered as the endogenous factors. So these are the contributing factors of the onset of disease. In the next video, we are going to talk about the onset, how to onset, how many different types of onset we can see from our daily practice. We will stop here. Thank you, guys.